Sugar Grove United Methodist Church. We'll go ahead and start with the light of the church. We have many things that are in our bulletin. We encourage you to take a look at that. Also go to our website, see what is also happening as well. We do want to remind our group that we have our prayer meeting on Monday night. Now there is a new link for all those that are involved that you will... Sorry. Thanks, Amy. I can hear my own voice going back. <laughs> um, but we do have a new link that we'll be using, uh, so you should receive that two hours prior to the prayer meeting, just so you know. Again, this is the spot. If you have any prayers that you want someone to be, uh, be prayed for, just let us know. Um, we will add that to the group. It will not go into the bulletin. We have many people in the bulletin, but we do have some other people as well that we want some private prayers for. So this would be a location that if you want to keep it private, it's a small group of people that uh, are amazing prayer warriors that we uh, take time to pray. Uh, also, to stay connected in our group, if you go to our website, you can hit the blue uh, button information there on the website, and you can add all your information. That will get you all our emails. There's a lot of, uh, we've sent out a few different emails for you. Another one, for example, usually on like Tuesday, if you happen to miss the service, you're able to go right there, hit that. It'll pull you right into this uh, weekend service so you can catch up as well. Ah, we have sign up sheet and I'm going to pass this around because hopefully we can get some other people to be signing up as well. One of the things I don't like doing is surprising people and say, oh, by the way, will you do a reading today? Um, so we are looking for greeters and liturgists. Really, you know, the liturgist is an important thing. You greeters, it seems like we always have people that are willing to do that. But if you're comfortable behind the mic, you'll get the reading beforehand. This is a way uh, for you to be part of the life of the church. I encourage you to consider that. But we have the next few weeks sitting here, and I will pass that around um, as well. Your contribution statements are right there in the fellowship area, right on the blue table. So if you had given last year, there's an envelope there. You can go ahead and collect your contribution statement. You have all your information there. We have some birthdays to celebrate. Uh, Kristen, um, Arian, and Mitch, if you see any of these guys, because I don't think I see any of them right in here right now. I know I actually have something with Dustin and stuff. So, um, if you see Chris or Aaron or Mix this week, uh, do wish them a happy birthday. Another one would be Julie Wilson's dad. He is going to be turning 94 this week. Uh, so uh, if you haven't seen Julie uh, or her dad, uh, please wish him a happy birthday. But you want to acknowledge that. And then we also have anniversary is Cindy and Don Coverley. So, look at you're smiling away. Look at yes. So, Brad, how many years, if I may ask? This is the one I'm allowed to ask, right? Fifty-one. <laughs> Fifty-one years. Amazing. Oh, so <laughs> and she's still forty-nine. I want that for the record. Too. <laughs> so, congratulations. That is amazing. And speaking of anniversaries, also Julie's parents on the uh, tomorrow will be celebrating <laughs> her parents. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Bill, and I did not catch her mother's name, sorry, are going to be celebrating 74 years tomorrow. So that's an, another amazing accomplishment there. So uh, let's see, I also have a couple other announcements for you, just so you know. Um, to those that are watching online, good morning. We just heard the echo as Amy jumped in real quick and looked in on Facebook. We have several people that are watching online. Um, say hi while you're online. Uh, it's a good way for us to keep track who's there, to see who's watching. Um, you guys are part of a community as well. We have many people that do join us online. So if you're online, say hello. It's actually been great. I gotta tell you, this series has been kind of fun. I've had a lot of people reaching out. I don't know how many of you guys ate the frog last week, <laughs> but there was a whole bunch of people reaching out. Uh, I ate the frog last week. Here it was. And you know, it's been fun going through this uh, sermon series. I would encourage you to go ahead and go back if you've been missing any of them. I think it's been pretty amazing. I'm not saying that I'm good, but the series is good. Uh, in the book, I have had several people purchase the book. It's called Win the Day. It's in your bulletin, Win the Day by Mark Patterson. There's a whole bunch of nuggets, you could say, 
Uh, right, Cassie? If that's how you would explain it. She's got the book and she's like, oh, there's so much in here. And so, uh, again, if you're looking for something to read that will help you pick up some different habits and keep you in a great mood and learn how to win the day, this is one that will be amazing. Let's see, I think that's all the announcements I'm going to cover. Is there any other announcements we need to share? Okay, just so you know, our pew pads will be coming back again. Uh, go ahead and fill out your pew information in there, and you will also have an email. You can add your email, and that will get you on the list as well. With that being said, let's rise and pass the peace this morning. <laughs> Lord, 
Let us worship God. Let's join together in our opening prayer. Great God of the universe, whose wisdom pervades all creation, we gather before you to give you all praise and honor. Wonderful and majestic are your works. Righteousness is seen in all that you do. You make a covenant and call us as heirs of its promise. You establish your law, showing all people that you are to be trusted. In company and with the redeemed of all ages, we lift our voices to acclaim your word. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you to over for our reading today. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 10 from the New Living Translation. Then he said to me, This is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel It is by not, <clears throat> not by force, nor by strength, but by spirit, says the Lord of heaven's army. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in Zerubbabel's way. It will become a level plain before him, and when Zerubbabel sets the final stone of the temple <coughs> in place, the people will shout, May God bless him. May God bless him. <clears throat> then another message came from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple, and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord's of heaven's armies that has sent you. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work of him, to see the thumb mark in Jerusalem's hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Invite all the children to come forward. <laughs> Good morning. What happened to the sunglasses and all that, huh? <laughs> Get out of here. Oh. <laughs> Those sunglasses give her power, just so you know. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? You guys doing good? Yeah? Are you all happy? Two of the three or two of the four? <laughs> you can go on. You can say go over to the mic. That's fine. So I got a question for you guys. Do you guys dream? Yes. Yes. Wait, what do you mean by dream? Do you mean like dreaming when you're sleeping? Or dream. Okay, how about? Well, like, what do you mean by dream or dream? <laughs> Okay, let's start with sleeping. Do you dream while you sleep? Yes. Okay. <laughs> she, dreams, she dreams some serious stuff sometimes. Doesn't even, don't even question it. Okay, all right, so then let's go. What about dreams for your future? Yes. Yes. Are they serious dreams too? Uh, mine are serious. No, I don't think so. Not all of them? All right, so let me, let's me let go a little bit further on those dreams for your future. How's that Spider-Man one going? Did you get a text on it? It was blinking, I saw it. <laughs> All right, so your dreams for the future. Are they big dreams? Can you tell me one of those big dreams? Any of them? Is that for your future? Yeah, what? what? Do you have one? For you, what is it? What's your big dream? To, to what? To sing to the world. Nice. Okay, that's an amazing. <laughs> it's serious. That's an amazing dream. To sing to the world. 
To be what? To be a famous singer? Well, then, I, Kim, we got some work to do, all right? It all starts at church, right here. You would tell them that they got this. They're going to help you guys get to that point, all right? You got a dream? You don't remember? <laughs> what do you hope that's a good thing? What do you, what do you mean? Do you have an idea of what you want to be when you grow up yet? A policeman? That, that's a big dream right there to help protect the world. That would be awesome. We appreciate all those people that uh, do that kind of service. Do you have any dreams? <laughs> Mom, do you have, do you have any dreams still? Uh, happy and my kids learn how to listen. Very good. That's your mom's dream too. Yes, flat thumbs up. I think that's all mom's dreams, right? Just so you know. Alright, so another another we better move on here. Um, another one for you, let's see. Uh, Alright, so how about this? Whatever we do, whatever those dreams are. Those dreams actually have to start out small. You have to start somewhere. We kind of talk around that in the sermon series. Small steps, that domino effect we did last week. It all kind of adds up to something bigger. You have to take that first step, and then the next step, and then you have to keep going. I mean, a great example for you is Sheldon. Sheldon is a great family. Sheldon, so... I got a question for you. You probably didn't like this. <laughs> so, Shelby, do you know how to play the piano and the organ from the minute you became a baby? No. no. <laughs> Did you maybe start playing like this at the beginning? Not quite. <laughs> oh, that's just me. <laughs> okay. You weren't as good as you are now. Correct. So Sheldon, you hear him playing all our music. It's amazing, right? It's powerful, a lot of great things, and his feet and his hands are going all over. But Sheldon has to put a lot of work into that to get to where he's at right now to play for us on Sundays. And every Sunday, he still has to continue to work. He's here on Fridays for a couple hours working through. He gets here probably right around 6 to 6.15 in the morning. They get here at, oh, 5? I never have asked. I just know by the time I get up and get up out there by 6.15, he's already here. At 5 in the morning, he comes and he works on the songs that he's playing. And I think the point I'm trying to get to you is that we can have some amazing dreams. But with these dreams, we have to actually take the step to make ourselves become for that dream to come true, okay? I want you to always remember that. God has some great plans for each and every one of us, all here in the sanctuary and throughout the world, but at times we still in, uh, need to take that step ourselves. Go ahead, you got something before we go to prayer? Um, You even titled some of her songs. So she was saying that at the very beginning she wasn't that good at singing and creating her own songs, but now she's getting better. And the ones that are better, she's very got a copyright on them and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, all right, last one before we go to prayer. Go ahead. Sings. These are definitely not my gifts. 
leaves that for my wife to help me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and go into prayer real quick because we have a lot that's happening. You guys want to be my echo with me? Heavenly Father, let us start from the beginning. Let us start small and see what you can do. With your guide, with you guiding us, let us have faith and trust. In you knowing that you are there. Let us feel your presence in our life. Help us to dream big. To do your will. Amen. to Niagara Falls, All right? I think a lot of us have been tied, uh, to Niagara Falls. I know Amy and I actually went there one year as one of our anniversaries many years ago. Um, we actually stayed on the ca uh, Canada side, and I gotta tell you, if you've been there, it's one thing, but if you go to the Canada side, it's beautiful. I mean, not only the view is beautiful, uh, beautiful but the way they actually maintain everything and how clean it really is, that is the side. So if you ever go to Niagara Falls, definitely take the time to cross over to the Canadian side. It is absolutely amazing. 
Now, Niagara Falls consists of three waterfalls. It has the American Falls, the Bridal Veil vale Falls, and the Horseshoe Falls. They combine to produce the highest flow rate of any waterfall on Earth. They say 3,160 tons of water flow over the, wall, uh, over the falls every second, falling at a speed of 32 feet per second. Now, another interesting fact for you, in the mid-18th century, the only way to cross the Niagara Gorge was by boat. On November 9, 1847, a civil engineer named Charles Ellett Jr. was commissioned to build a suspension bridge across the Niagara Gorge. The question, of course, was when and where and how do you get the first cable across an 825-foot valley with 225-foot cliffs on either side? Oh, and did I mention the rapids that are flying and how quick that's going. Now at dinner one night, Ellett's team were brainstorming ways of how to get that first cable across the gorge. One person proposed taking the cable and tying it to a rocket and sending it over. Another one proposed using a cannon to get the uh, cable across. And that is when Theodore Graves Hewlett a local iron worker suggested this, get this, he suggested a kite flying contest. It was a 15-year-old boy named Homan Walsh who won the $10 cash prize for flying the first kite across the gorge. Now for the record, I want to give you a little bit more information about this young man. In January of 1848, Hundreds of kids tried flying kites across the gorge. If you know anything about the weather conditions in that part of our country during that time of year, you know that's actually pretty impressive, right? I mean, we probably all have seen pictures of Niagara Falls with it kind of being frozen, yet the water's coming still down at the very bottom. Some beautiful pictures. Here we are in January trying to fly a kite. That 15-year-old boy took a ferry from the American side to the Canadian side to take advantage of the prevailing winds. He flew his, his kite all day and all night. When his kite string broke, he had to wait eight days to cross back over again. He retrieved his kite, made repairs, and he crossed over again. It was on January 30th of 1848 that Walsh's kite made it across the gorge, winning him that $10. Going back to one of our sermons earlier in this series, you don't give up. If you get knocked down, you get back up and you try again. This is exactly what he did. But here's the interesting part. You see, the day after that flight with that kite, a stronger line was attached to that kite string, then pulled across. And then they added another string to those two strings and pulled it across. And then they added another one. Next thing you know, they were up to a rope size string. And eventually what happens is they were able to tie a cable consisting of, of 36 strands of 10 gauge wire. It would become the world's first railway uh, suspension bridge strong enough to support a 170-ton locomotive train to go across it. Now here's the point. It all started with one kite string. Think about that. It all started with one kite string. The reason is because it always does. As God said to the prophet Zechariah, do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubel's hand. See, Lee, I got it. I told you how to say it, and then I, I said, I'll probably just mess it up. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Zerubel's hand. Now, plumb line and straight uh, kite string, pretty much the same thing is what we're going to go with today. If you do little things like they're big things, God will do big things like they're little things. 
So let's unpack our fourth habit, Fly the Kite from our sermon series, Win the Day, by Mark Batterson. Now, let me rewrote you. I say that probably a lot. You know, I'm going to always try to be honest, and sometimes it might seem harsh as well, some of the things I might say, and I don't mean it, I mean it out of love. But I know people who will say they'll give more when they make more. Listen, I love them, but I'm not buying what they're selling. If you aren't generous with a little time, talent, and treasure, you won't be generous with a lot. Now, generosity always starts right here and right now. Now, I know people who also have said they'll serve more when they have more time. Yeah, no, that's not the way it works. See, you don't find time. You actually have to make time. And I also know people who have said they'll step up when the big opportunity presents itself. I beg to differ. Not if you aren't seizing the small opportunities that are, all, that are always around you. And guys, there are always opportunities for us as Christians to be helping others and to serve others. Now here's the bottom line and the big idea for today. Again, I might seem harsh at times, but how you do anything is how you will do everything. I want you to hear that again. How you do anything is how you will do everything. If you're faithful, faithful with a lot, a little, you will be, you will be faithful with a lot. So go ahead and dream. Dream big. Show me the size of your of your dream, and I I will show you the size of your God. Go after a dream that is destined to fail without the divine intervention. But you can't just dream big. You have to start small and think long. That, my brothers and sisters, that is what flying the kite is all about. A single kite string can eventually become a bridge that connects two countries. Think about that. A single kite string can eventually become a bridge that connects two countries. Now let me set the scene for you today about our reading. Zerubbabel is the leader of a small group of people that return to Judah with a God-sized vision. Rebuild the temple that Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed in 586 BC. Half a century later, the Lord says to Zerubbabel, as he is looking at the ruins, he says, It is not by force nor by strength, but my spirit, says the Lord. Let me say this right out of the gate. Without the Holy Spirit, I am a below average Joe. Does anybody else want to agree? Not about me being that. I'm talking about you, okay? All right, I don't need any more comments from the peanut house. <laughs> But, but honestly, here's the thing. God doesn't call the qualified. God quali uh, qualifies the call. And the good news is this. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you can do anything. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the X factor. There's our map again. The Holy Spirit is the difference between the best you can do and the best that God can do. Let me share a secret with you. God wants to do things in you and through you that are beyond your ability, beyond your resources, beyond your imagination. Why? So that God, so that God can get the glory. How? Through the Holy Spirit. Now the reading went on to say, nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in Zerubbabel's way. So here's a question for you. What is your mighty mountain? Think about it. What is your mighty mountain? There comes a moment when you stop talking to God about your mountains, and you start talking to the mountains about your God. 
That's one way that we lift the script, which was habit number one. You declare his power. You declare his grace, his peace, his love, his glory, his goodness, his healing. You don't deny the obstacle or the odds. You actually confront the brutal facts, but you do it with unwavering faith. You exercise your authority as a child of God, as a follower of Christ, as a citizen of this thing called the kingdom of God. Now, Mark Batterson, the author of Win the Day from the book, he says, every prayer has to meet, to meet a two-fold litmus test. It has to be in the will of God and for the glory of God. If it's not, then it's a non-starter. If it is, then look out, because God will do some amazing things. Now, I have no idea what mountain is staring you in the face. Is it the mountain of anxiety? Is it the mountain of addiction? Is it anger? Is it the mountain of injustice or unforgiveness? Is it the mountain of depression, frustration, or fear? I don't know what that mountain is, but I want you to know this. We all have mountains. And if I'm gonna be real with you again, we actually might want to say we all have mountain ranges. And what I mean by that is we have more than one mountain that we're fighting against, that we're dealing with. But this is when and where I fall back on what I know for sure. And I hope you can do that as well. You see, he is still the God who makes sidewalks through the sea. He is still the God who makes the sun rise and the sun set. He is still the God who turns water into wine, and he is still the God who moves mountains. Now, if you're taking notes, I want you to jot this down. If not, I want you to put this on your radar, keep it in your head. Testimony is prophecy. Now, what does that mean? Actually, it's pretty simple. If God did it before, he can do it again. If God's going to do it for me, guess what? He's going to do it for you. Why? Because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Now our reading said in verse 7, Nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in, Zer in Zer Zerubbabel's way. I just got to pause right there. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in Zer Zerubbabel's way. It will become a level plain before him. Now, you've got several habits from, uh, from our reading today. I don't know if you caught them. You flip the script, habit number one, by speaking to the mountain. You play offense by exercising your authority. You declare the will of God, the glory of God. You've also got habit number two, which was kiss the way. The obstacle is not the enemy. The obstacle is the way. You don't go around the mountain. By faith, God will get you to the other side, and you'll be a bigger and better person because of it. You have the authority to move the mountain. Who? You. How? With faith as small as a mustard seed. Now, how can something so small move something so big? That's habit number three. Eat the frog. It's those high leverage habits that have a domino effect over time. If you want God to do the super, remember, then you have to be part of the process. You have to do the natural. Now let me drop down to verse 10. This is where we fly the kite of faith. It said, do not despise these small beginnings from the Lord, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. Plumb lines, kite strings, right? They're all the same thing. <clears throat> now, a plumb line was actually used as what we know, would know as a tape measure back in those days. They would use a plumb line to measure things. I want you to stop and think about this. The Israelites, they hadn't even broken ground on the temple yet. All they have done is make measurements. 
to lay things out. And God was already giving them a standing ovation. Think about that. Our Heavenly Father celebrates the little steps of faith, the small acts of kindness. In fact, you can't give someone a drink of water without God taking a notice. God is great not just because nothing is too big. God is great because nothing is too small. We want to do amazing things for God. But that isn't our job. God is the one who does amazing things for us. Our job is to declare ourselves to God one day at a time. If we do our job every single day, then God will do his job. If we fly the kite, God will build the bridge. Now, do you know that 83% of people want to write a book? Yet very few do. And why is that? Well, you cannot finish what you do not start in the first place. It doesn't matter whether it's writing a book, running a marathon, or getting a graduate degree. You've got to reverse engineer your goals and turn them into daily habits. Then you fly the kite. Now, when I first started a program at the former church I, I worked at, it was called Life Missions. And I had this dream, a dream about doing missions throughout the United States and throughout uh, the world, other countries. We started small at the very beginning. We started with 13 youth and six adults in that program. I did some quick math. I got actually quite a few of you guys sitting out there that have gone on these trips, but I did some quick math over these 15 years. You realize that over 2,000 participants have gone on these trips. That small beginning, that small start, was the beginning of something amazing. If you do little things like they're big things, I want to remind you that God will do big things like they're little things. I'm looking forward to see what God will be doing here at this church. So as I close out this week, I want you to dream. I want you to dream big. I want you to dream big for yourself. I want you to dream big for this church. I want you to dream big for others. And God will step back and see that <clears throat> it is good. God wants us to dream and then put in the effort in all that we do. We just have to have that faith and trust in him. We already trust him for the big things like keeping the planet in the orbit, right? All we need to do now is trust him with the little things, which is everything else by comparison. Albert Einstein said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, and the other is as though everything is. Now, in case you haven't guessed this yet, after the seven months you've started to get to know me, I personally believe in the second train of thought. If you want to win the day and make it a masterpiece, you've got to start by recognizing it for what it actually is. And that is that every day is nothing short of a miracle, which is given to each and every one of us from our God. Amen? Amen.
we go into prayer this morning, do we have any joys or concerns we would like to share this morning? With that being said, let us go into silent prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, you've heard what's going on in each of our hearts this morning, and we have reached out to you to go into conversation with you, to put our trust in you, Lord, the trust and faith to know that you have the best intentions for each <coughs> one of us, to know that you love and care for us, that you're providing so much in so many ways. Lord, I ask that we just realize truly the presence that you have in our lives, how you actually take care of us. Let us understand the yeses, and most of all, let us understand the noes at times. Lord, this morning, we reach out to you for prayers, prayers for Diana Baker's sister, Barb, She'll be having up, uh, upcoming surgery on February 19th to reduce some fluid on her brain. Ask for prayers for Bubba, who's going to be having uh, surgery coming on February 12th. Lord, uh, he's been diagnosed with a, he's got a cancerous tumor on his bladder, so I just ask that you be with him during this time. We ask for uh, prayers for rehab to continue for Julie as she's recovering from her knee surgery, for Willie as he's continuing to deal with a foot issue. And Lord, I also ask for prayers for Dorless Roberts and her family, uh, as we did the graveside just yesterday, be with all of them and let them feel your love and your presence as well for all those people that were there, Lord. Lord, I ask that you continue to be with us, be with all those that are listed in our bulletin, the ones that are dealing with uh, cancer, with dementia, special prayers for Oliver, the one-year-old who is dealing with leukemia. Um, he's on a second treatment, Lord, and then uh, hopefully this treatment will go well and he's able to go home soon. I just ask that you be with the doctors and the nurses and, and the family and all the teachers and the friends that know this family, Lord, just be with them uh, during this challenging time and let them feel your presence again and put their trust in in you, Lord. I also ask for prayers for all our military people who are continuing to serve in this country. Bless them, be with them, be with their family who's missing them as well, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice that they're willing to do to give us this freedom that we have in this country. And Lord, I ask for special prayers for your country right here. Lord, we are in such a divide right now. I ask for prayers for the division that's happening here. I have prayers for everything that's going on right now in Texas. Let us understand your true will in all of this and help us understand that. Let us show grace to the difference of opinions that we might have on the situation. Lord, I also want to thank you for the joys. The joys of birthdays, anniversaries, the joys of the dreams that we have. Lord, I ask that we dream big. Dream big not only for ourselves, but for others and for your church here at Sugar Grove, Lord. I just ask that we put our trust and our faith in you. Let us realize truly how blessed we are. And Lord, I'm thankful for new beginnings, smarting, uh, starting small, and letting us put our faith and trust in you as we dream and to see how you are going to do some amazing things 
in all these situations in our life. And Lord, I'm thankful to be here in your house today. I'm thankful to be with my brothers and sisters as we reach out to this community and the surrounding world to do your work in the ways that you are calling us to do as a church. And I thank you to be able to join in a prayer that you, Jesus, taught your disciples so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. At this time, we'll go ahead and take our offering.
continue to bless your church here. Let us do the things that we have been called to do here in this community, the surrounding community, and throughout the world, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.